Hello and welcome to our live safety demo. This video is meant to provide construction workers the tools to better identify common construction site hazards, demonstrate the danger inherent in these hazards, and teach workers how to best protect themselves and that it is in their best interest to do so. Today we will be discussing the energy source of temperature, namely that which is created by the sun. High temperatures can cause injuries via burnt flesh from exposure to extreme temperatures, such as fires and hot metals, sunburns from short-term overexposure to the sun's rays, skin cancer from long-term overexposure to the sun's rays, and overheating of the body exhibiting itself as heat exhaustion and eventually heat stroke. It is likely that you had a negative reaction to the previous images, yet not the one seen on screen. Heat illnesses are one of the greatest risks of injuries and death resulting from temperature, yet may be ignored due to the hidden damage and lack of gory image. In 2014, 2,630 workers suffered from heat illnesses and 18 died from heat stroke on the job, all of which were easily avoidable. Because of the lack of attention given to heat illnesses and the severity and frequency at which it disables construction workers, this live safety demo models the effectiveness of cooling one's body through sweat, mitigating the likelihood of experiencing heat illnesses. To better understand how heat, the way in which we measure temperature, damages our bodies, let us look at the physics of heat as it travels from the sun to eventually interact with our bodies. The energy of the sun originates from nuclear fusion. This fusion is made possible due to the extreme pressures exerted by the sun, up to 40 billion pounds per square inch. That is the equivalent of swimming under 17 billion feet of water, or having 5 billion grown men stand under. So what is nuclear fusion? Imagine two hydrogen atoms running together at full speed, both carrying a lunch pail of energy. They collide at such a high speed that they morph into one helium atom, but only have need for one lunch pail. The other lunch pail of energy, or neutron, is then released out of the sun at an incredible speed. This occurs millions of times per second, releasing an estimated 4 million tons of neutrons full of energy out of the sun into the solar system. Each helium collision releases a neutron out at different speeds with different wavelengths. The X-ray and gamma rays are deflected by our ozone, but the UV rays are allowed in and carry the most energy. This energy then passes the Earth's ozone layer, reaching us. Now, let us discuss the physics behind how this energy heats up our bodies. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. This amazing... No, it's not Superman. It's another being from out of this planet. Our helium buddy from the sun with his neutron of energy. Thousands of these neutrons are bombarding you every second you are in the sun's glow. Consider taking the first shot in a game of pool. When the cue ball is hit, it is given energy which it transfers to the other balls, sending them in many directions. Similarly, the neutron from the sun hits your skin molecules, causing a transference of energy exciting your skin's molecules. If they are excited enough, they damage your skin tissues causing sunburn and with enough exposure to these neutrons over time, they can actually damage your DNA, causing skin cancer. Even if neither of these occur, the neutrons still excite your skin's molecule, raising your body's temperature. This leads into our live safety demo concerning how your body protects you from this heat and overheating. Your body has a natural cooling system that is activated just under your skin, sweat. So how does sweat cool us down? Remember, temperature is the same thing as energy. Your skin, which was excited by the sun's neutrons, begins to excite your sweat, transferring its energy to these water molecules. The molecules of water become excited enough to become water vapor. This process is called evaporation. When your sweat evaporates or goes from a liquid to a vapor, the water molecules extract the energy, which is heat, they need to vaporize with them away from the surface of your skin, cooling your skin down. See the above image for what is happening at a molecular level. The red molecule, your skin, is hitting the blue molecule, your sweat. After the skin molecule hits the water molecule, the skin molecule slows down, becomes less excited, loses energy, and therefore cools down. Your sweat is not the only part of your body cooling you down. 
When you get hot, your body sends a message to your blood vessels, swelling them and bringing closer to your skin. Your skin, cooled by your sweat, then cools your blood. This cool blood is then distributed throughout your body, cooling you down. Our live safety demo attempts to replicate this process. In our demo, we have a vinyl and copper tubing, which is supposed to represent the skin. And through those tubings, water flows, which is supposed to represent our blood. As can be seen, one of the tubes has a wet towel cover in it. This is supposed to represent sweat. The other tubing does not, which is supposed to represent a person not sweating. Let's see what happens when we put them in a closed system with heat lamps, which represent the sun. Here you can see a high speed running of our live safety demo. Water is pumping through the system with and without a towel cover, representing sweating and not sweating on a hot day. The system is over 100 degrees and replicates a hot day. Right now, both people, sweating and not, are over 104 degrees. You can see the sweating person is already 3 degrees cooler than the non-sweating person. The sweating person is now under 104 degrees in heat exhaustion, while the non-sweating person is over 104 degrees under heat stroke. Towards the final stretch here, you will see the sweating person drop to 98 degrees, normal body temperature, while the non-sweating person is still at 103. This live safety demo displays how the process of sweating cools a person down. Recall how high temperatures damage your skin molecules leading to sunburns? Well, high internal temperatures do the same thing to your lungs, heart, stomach, and brain molecules. This is easily avoidable, which we hope we have portrayed throughout this video. The main way to avoid overheating is to sweat. This requires constant hydration. OSHA recommends drinking water every 15 minutes on a hot day, whether you are thirsty or not. Other remedies to avoid overheating are a wet towel, shade, and in extreme cases, placement of an ice pack on the neck, armpits, and groin as seen in the image. Now let's do a quick recap of what we have discussed. High temperatures cause burnt flesh, being exposed to hot objects or the sun, skin cancer, caused by long-term overexposure to the sun, and overheating of the body, causing heat illnesses. Heat illnesses killed 18 workers in 2014, with 2,630 moderate to major injuries. When your body overheats, your internal molecules become very excited, damaging you internally, much in the same way your skin is damaged when you experience a sunburn. Sweat. Sweat is the most effective way to cool down your body. This is achieved through constant hydration. We would like to thank you for watching our presentation. Please remember, hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Take care.